Hey what's up everyone, in this video we're going to fillet a fish. I started flaying it with this knife and uh, it's not that great so I'm going to use my regular fillet knife instead to go over this video that's why you see a little, little bit of blood when we get started here. Alright but we'll get right into it. First thing you want to do is go behind the little fin right there and These fish scales are sometimes getting away in life. You ain't got to, you don't have to push hard or nothing. You want the knife to do the work. So once you cut, once you get your cut that way, you can feel when you hit bone, so you want to stop there. You don't want to push through it. Then you take it along the spine here, kind of do the same thing. If you feel bone, you're going too far. So just follow the spine ever so gently. You don't have to push hard. And it'll separate the meat from the bones. Go all the way down to the tail. Then what I like to do is just gently keep pulling it back like this. And it, it just follows the bone line. It gets all the meat possible off the fish. Sorry if you can't see it. I can't really move the camera because I got bloody hands and fishy bloody hands. But you just let the knife do the work. And you see it'll it'll follow the bone nicely, separating it, separating the meat from the bone. Which is also good because you don't want to leave any meat behind. I see a lot of people that hack hack them up, do a real bad job. Then just fold it back. And you can see it's following right along those bones. Just keep on cutting it. I don't get in any hurry to do this. Alright, now I got all the meat. This is all the meat here separated from the body. Then I'll take it where it meets. With the skin still attached. Take a cut all the way down, separating that meat. Get it all the way like that. And the easiest way, I think, is to fold it over, get it like a 45 degree angle going. And usually it'll. And you have a nice piece of meat. Throw it in your water bowl over here. Dispose of the fish. And move on to the next one. Now these are some big old bluegill guys. Caught these this morning. This morning they're about 10 inches each. And they're very much still alive here. Fresh fish. And we'll do the same thing here. Right where that fin is. Man, these suckers got some tough scales on them. And they really screw up your knife. When you try to cut through them, you won't be able to. But once you get past them, it's easy, like butter. And you want to do the same thing again. Go along the spine. Just a little bit, you know, just to get that initial cut going. Follow the spine all the way down. I'm a little rusty, it's been like two years since I've done this, but I plan on doing it a lot more this year. Easy fella. Then again, you just want to make slow, easy slices, following along his bones. All the way down until you meet the rib cage.
take and separate it again. Man, see, see what I mean about these scales? Look at that. That's all, a knife's worst enemy, bro. Why the smaller fish are easier, they have smaller scales. In my opinion. Alright. You can get down to the tail. When I was when I did this more often, I was so good at it I wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be bleeding at all. So I definitely need my practice. But you're at least getting an overall sense of how it's done. Let's see, just get that meat up for there. That was pretty good, better than the first time. You see, some nice meat. Check it for bones, which there's none. And you know, flip her over and do it again. Again, down along the spine of him, separating the bones and the meat. That's all you're doing, pretty much. And again, slowly pull it along that cut you just made. I'm sorry, if you can't see it right now. Doing my best. around those rib bones. And separate the meat. Right here. Uh, the bluegill is my favorite fish to eat. Um, nothing like this. Uh, Coat them in something called Zatarans, Crispy Southern. I don't know if you guys have heard of that before, but that, I think that stuff is just the bee's knees. Deep fried in it and uh, fried up in some peanut oil. Oh man, that stuff's good. You can even trick the kids into say it's chicken nuggets or something. I mean, they'll know once they taste it, but at least you'll get them to eat it. But there's another good filet there. So I got a little faster on that one. I only got three of them. Uh, my dad took the rest of them home so he can put them in his freezer for when we have fish fries. This one's not as big, but it's probably about eight inches. Still a good bluegill. You see, the, the smaller ones, they have smaller scales, so it's, it's just a lot easier. Those big ones, I don't know, they just seem to get in the way. Or maybe I was just rusty, I don't know. But you go along the spine again. Slowly, no hurry. Want to get all that meat you can off of them. I'm very big on, you know, uh, well first, not killing anything you don't eat. And second, to try not to waste any of it. If, usually, if uh, I was going catfishing, if it was the weekend, instead of it being Sunday, when I'm making this video, I would... I would cut the heads off and keep them because that's excellent catfish bait. Okay. Get that feet separated from the bones again. Fold her over. That's a pretty good job there. 45 degrees. And then. Pull that meat right off there. Not too bad on that one. I'll, I'll put it in a bowl of a cold water over here to help rinse it off and everything. Then I'll, I'll rinse it off again after that. Then put it in a Tupperware or a baggie and stick her in the refrigerator till I cook it. And if, if you're not going to cook it within the next day or two, go ahead and put it in the freezer. Go down along the spine again. 
I'm sorry if my hand's in the way, guys. Uh, I don't know how else I could do this. Or you can see it better. I can't move my camera, obviously, because I got blood and stuff on my hands. You look down inside of it there, you see these are all the bones. There's not any meat left on there. And that's exactly how you want it. That's when you know you've done a good job. It took me a long time to to really get it. I know I've seen people older than me that have been fishing longer than me. Still, I'm like, man, what are you doing? You're, you're just screwing that fish up. Please don't know. If you don't know how to clean a fish properly, learn. And don't do it until you learn. Have someone to teach you. It's, it's, just, just do your best, you know. Take your time. And the goal is to get as much meat as you can and cause as less harm to the fish. I mean, they don't have very many nerves up here, so I doubt they feel it too much. But when you, when when they start bleeding a lot, then you know they feel it. I've seen people take catfish, and they'll take him, bang, hit him on the head and stuff. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Just clean that fish. Be done with it. But there you go. Uh, that's going to be a nice meal for me either today or tomorrow. Hope you're not disgusted by a little bit of blood and fish guts and stuff. Well, not guts, but guts are down here. But, uh, yeah, I hope it doesn't disgust you. And fish is really good for you and excellent source of protein. So, it's also great in survival situations. Here's my bloody hand. I want to thank you for watching. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet. And as always, remember, be ready. I'm going to go get cleaned up.